Hello everyone. As the title suggests, this video is going to be on why the change in aperture of a camera affects the depth of focus for your images. Not the how, but the why. First off, I want to give a little disclaimer here. I'm not a photographer. I have dabbled with taking photographs with film and some digital. I'm a high school physics teacher. And as such, I sometimes want to understand the why the reasoning behind an effect that I see, rather than just being able to describe how it happens. Now, the simulation I'm going to use here is not my own. The description and details of it are provided down below. The videos I use showing cameras are my own. And lastly, this is not going to be a perfect description. Uh, this is very topical. I just want to give a quick survey of an idea that I think will help people understand something that up until now seems a little bit hard to find online. But let's start with the how. I think we already know that the f-stops on a camera adjust the aperture of the lens. Essentially, it's adjusting how wide the opening is. Low f-stops have shallow depths of focus, large f-stops have wide depths of focus. We can see this and we can test it out. We can do trials and error. And furthermore, there's plenty of videos on YouTube already, and there are plenty of websites describing this feature. Many great videos with great diagrams. I'll try to link some of those down below. But what we're here for is to describe the why. Why is it that adjusting the opening on your lens produces a difference in your ability to focus on objects? There's one big simple reason. A narrow aperture lets less light in. Simple as that. Less light coming in, especially from the periphery of the lens, means you're going to get less out of focus light. By reducing the amount of out of focus light, you're going to make more objects look in focus. That's it. That's the quick description. But I think it's better to illustrate this. So what I've got here on the screen is a simulation from phidemo.app. It's a physics demonstrator app. And it allows us to set up things like a lens. In this case, this is a not perfect lens. This is supposed to be a glass optic that's Imperfect, but it does have a focal length. I also have a dotted line here that represents where your film would be. This is where the image is going to be projected. These two brown markings here are lines that are going to allow me to close or open the aperture. They're just blocks. They're going to prevent light from getting past. And with this setup, I can add rays of light. So I'm going to add a point source of light with a finite angle right here. And I'm going to have it shining towards this lens. It's a pretty cool demonstration. Uh, I really like this demo. It shows the lights. If I move it around, the rays go out across a finite angle. They strike the lens. They're directed towards, hopefully, the lens's focal point. But they obey the laws of optics. They try to converge because this is a converging lens. But the nice thing about this simulation is it's not perfect. This is not a perfect lens. The lenses in your camera are not perfect either. In your camera, there's more than one lens. So we're simplifying things here quite a bit. But from one imperfect lens, light tends to converge on one area. And we can adjust the focus by adjusting how far away the lens is from our screen or from our film. So in this case, where the light seems to be most in focus is right about here. So this spacing between lens and film would give, make this point source of light seem in focus right here. However, you can see from the extremities of the lens, there's out of focus light. There's extra stuff. So while the most intense image is right here, you're going to get a little bit of extra. This light, while not dominant, is going to cause the image to be slightly out of focus. However, there might be other point sources of light around whatever your object is that will dominate those areas of the film, so you won't see this light. You're not taking a picture of a candle very often, but if you do, 
you may see some glow around the point source of light in your image because of these extreme edges of the lens. We want to make it more in focus. We can close our aperture. And as I do that, you can see the extraneous light that's not on the focal point starts to disappear. And I'm left with only light that's in focus on my screen. Reducing the light that enters reduces the out of focus light around the edges, which makes your source look better. Now let's go ahead and open up the aperture again. And let's add a second point of light. I'll add one that is closer in the field of view, still pointing towards the lens. Now we can see that this source of light doesn't look like the light's converging on our film. In fact, I'll bring it even closer. At this point, you can see that the light really seems to be focusing beyond where our film is. So we're getting a wide area here, which means it's gonna look blurry. That point is gonna be a blob. So while one object is in focus, the other is out of focus. But we can change our depth of focus. We can make it so that this object looks in focus by minimizing the lens opening. We close the aperture. As you can see, we start losing some of that extra light. We close the aperture on the other side as well. And slowly but surely, that thing that was completely out of focus, well, that looks pretty much like a point source. It's still a little bit of a blob. It's not as finely focused as this point right here, but it's definitely less light. So it's gonna be less blurry than it was before. And we know that you can't have something too close to your lens and still get it in focus. So what if we reset our aperture? And we move the point source further away. Now, this further light source seems like it's, well, it seems like it's trying to focus in front of our film. So the light that goes beyond that is gonna be blurry, it's gonna be spread out. Close the aperture and see what happens. Fewer and fewer light rays make it through the lens. And as fewer light rays make it through the lens, it looks less blobby. There's less out of focus light hitting. And if we can close it further and further, eventually it starts to look like it's just a point source of light coming through. So to recap, changing your aperture changes the depth of focus. You know that. You can see it, you can experience it, you can test it out. But why it changes your depth of focus is because it's limiting the amount of light coming through the camera. You can see this through your viewfinder if you do a depth of focus preview, and you can see the results when you actually take pictures. Now, hopefully this has been an informative video. Hopefully it provided a little bit of information that maybe was missing from your mind. Maybe it's something that you thought about in the past and you've said, you know what? I know how the camera works. I don't need to know the why, but the why is important. The why is interesting to a lot of us. And hopefully this helped fill that why for you.